I'm going to be talking about the month of Adar. We just entered the month of Adar a few days ago, and the Lord really put it on my heart to begin to share with his people the importance and the significance surrounding his biblical calendar. And he set his biblical calendar in the heavens in the beginning. He laid out the heavens, he laid out the stars and their constellations, and he called them all by name. And he said that he placed them in the heavens so that they could be for signs and for seasons for his people. And so in this uh, Western culture, we have definitely gotten away of the biblical calendar of God. And this is why it's so confusing um, to keep track of time and months and there's uneven months and um, women cannot keep track of their monthly cycles well. It's very confusing because they took us off the lunar calendar that God had us on and placed us on a solar calendar. So the Lord is restoring the the biblical calendar, the Mazaros and his constellations. First, I'm going to break down the overview of what's packed into the month of Adar. And each month, the Lord has so much rich information that he has packed in his biblical calendar according to the months. And through these details that he attributes to the months of his calendar, he is communicating a beautiful message for each month so that we can be in alignment with his times and seasons. The tribe of Issachar was known for knowing times and seasons. And so following the Maseroth, following the biblical months and God's biblical timetable, we can stay connected and in alignment with what God is communicating month to month. Amen. So the month of Adar is associated with strength and the stone tied to this month is the amethyst stone. There's also a tribe that's associated with each month and the tribe associated with Adar is the tribe of Nathali. And it says here, sweetness is to me a time of celebration that your curse is overturned. And that's just music to my ears because the times that we're living in right now and specifically the times that we're in right now is full of demonic curses. But this month of Adar is a time of celebration that your curse is being overturned. And the joy of Adar is what makes this the pregnant month. And this month you are to develop your war strategy. This particular month is associated with the constellation Pisces or the fish. And it um, each month is associated with a constellation because that constellation is actually in the heavens at that time of year during the month of Adar. So God is speaking through the constellations. He set the stars in the heavens and he called them all by name. And so he's speaking something in the month of Adar through the symbolic meaning of the fish. And so we're going to get into that. We're going to talk about that. And this month is also about finding supply in the hidden world. And of course, the month of Adar has to do with the book of Esther. Adar 1 began on February 10th. And because this is a leap year, Adar 2 will begin on March 11th this year. Adar is the 12th month of the Jewish calendar, counting from Nisan. Adar comes in the very beginning of spring, and it is the only month in the Jewish calendar that comes back for seconds. Double your joy, double your fun. During a Jewish leap year, there is an added month called Adar 1, inserted before this month of Adar, termed Adar 2, in a leap year. This aligns the lunar months with a solar year, ensuring that the holiday falls in the proper seasons. The Jewish leap year literally means pregnant year in Hebrew. It occurs approximately once every three years. When Adar enters, joy increases. This reaches its climax on the 14th of the month as we celebrate Mordecai and Esther's triumph over the wicked Haman. The spirit of Purim permeates the entire month, making it a time of unparalleled rejoicing and good fortune for the Jewish people. Known as a month of celebration and happiness, Adar contains the joyous holiday of Purim that takes place mid-month. Purim, however, isn't the only thing that makes Adar special. The Talmud tells us that when the month of Adar arrives, we increase in joy to welcome a season of miracles. 
Accordingly, the Talmud tells us that this month is fortuitous for the Jewish people. We are being told to be happy now. The Hebrew name Adar is related to the word Adir, which denotes strength and power. The term Adir is used to refer to the Jewish people. What could be more appropriate for the month when the Jewish people's fortunes are strong? Tradition relates that Moses passed away on the seventh of Adar. The Talmud tells us that when the evil Haman wished to destroy our nation, he staged a lottery to determine the most opportune date. When the lot called a Pur, hence the holiday name of Purim, fell on Adar, he rejoiced. What better month to punish the Jews, he thought, than Adar when Moses passed away? Surely no month could be lower for the Jewish people. But what Haman did not know was that Moses passed away on the very same day he was born, the seventh of Adar. The day of Moses' birth, the Talmud relates, helped avert the evil decree. Though we celebrate the miraculous events that brought about the holiday of Purim in Adar, Haman was actually hanged in Nisan. Purim commemorates not Haman's death, but rather the time when our ancestors rested after their miraculous salvation and victory in battle. Through Adar, God is letting us know we are on the way out. Adar was the last month the Jewish people spent in Egypt before the Exodus. Adar's joy is so great in part because it serves as the opening to an even greater rejoicing, the miracles of Passover. Finding provision under the sea. The Lord placed the constellation in the heavens for signs and seasons and to illustrate his written word in the stars. Psalm 19.1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they display knowledge. So the astrological sign for the month of Adar is Pisces or Dag in Hebrew, meaning fish. In Jewish tradition, fish are a sign of blessing and fruitfulness. Also, just as fish live in water, the Jewish people thrive when immersed in the Torah, which is compared to life-giving water. Fish are hidden from us. This reminds us of the hidden miracle of the Purim story. The word dag is in fish, as in fish, alludes to worry. This shows us that as Adar progresses, our spiritual practices should involve overcoming our tendency to worry. We worry because we feel uncertain. The way to overcome worry then is to find certainty and even deeper than that to allow our uncertainties to elevate and free us and thus bring us joy. The constellation Pisces also reminds me of the pressure the money collectors tried to pressure Peter with over the temple tax and the miracle Jesus performed when he told Peter to retrieve the temple tax or coin from the fish's mouth. Jesus performed a money miracle through a fish, thus receiving the supplies he needed from under the sea. The tribe that is associated with Adar is Naphtali. Yaakov blessed his son Naphtali to be an, a swift deer. Indeed, the tribe of Naphtali inherited this trait of alchemy. Worry and doubt weigh you down physically, but to be light on your feet is to embody an emotional and mental lightness or flexibility. These are the traits that allow us to tolerate paradox while dancing joyfully through life. The body part associated with the month of Adar is the spleen. So there's more information I can share on Adar. There's so much information packed in each month of God's calendar, but I'll leave you with this for now. I hope that this was uh, eye-opening and just gives you plenty of things to meditate on and really meditate on what God is speaking through all these things for this month. Again, a reminder that this month is a month to make your war strategy. This is also a month of celebration for miracles and overcoming and overturning the curse. This is also a month to celebrate um, the coming out of Egypt because this was the last month they spent in Egypt. So there's so many prophetic things that I think are in alignment with what is going on in the spiritual realm in our day today and it's just amazing how the lord is the god of time of all time and and what he his story is relevant to today and spot on to what we are experiencing and going through to this day and so he is the same back then now and forever amen god bless you